Hey buddy, my name's Gregory and welcome to Tell Me More, the series where we explore the strange and unexplained. Of all the bizarre stories I've researched for this series, none are stranger or more profound than the Philadelphia Experiment, a supposed World War II operation that set out to make an American ship invisible to radar, but accidentally led to that ship disappearing and teleporting several hundred miles. Sure, there are more popular topics like the Roswell crash, Area 51, JFK, Elvis, but none of them have fascinated me quite like this story has. This is actually the very first conspiracy that I looked into as soon as I got internet access as a child. But looking into it again, I was surprised at just how well this story has endured even 70 years later despite the fact that there seems to be no hard evidence that this happened at all. But there is reason to believe that this story might be true. I mean, the Navy made a concerted effort to hide this story from the public, and that has to count for something, right? So what exactly happened to the USS Eldridge in 1942? <laughs> During the early parts of World War II, the Allied countries were being outmaneuvered by German U-boats and outmatched by sea mines. We had lost around 1,000 ships during the war, and it was worrying the Navy. Allegedly, the Americans solicited the help of Albert Einstein to devise a way to make it harder for their ships to be seen on radar, and harder for their ships to be hit by magnetic mines and torpedoes. Albert Einstein was devising his grand unified theory combining his theory of relativity with our understanding of the electromagnetic spectrum. The initial plan, apparently, was to repel these magnetic ordinates by degaussing the ship with a strong magnetic field, making it safer for allied ships to travel through minefields, and making it more difficult for German U-boats to sneak attack unsuspecting vessels. Or, at least, that's what they told the crew of the USS Eldridge. It seems that the real plan was to make allied ships invisible to radar, and even invisible to the naked eye. The idea was to surround the ship in a very specific electromagnetic field that was capable of bending light around it, so that anyone who looked at the ship would only be able to see the empty ocean behind it. Nikola Tesla had only died just a few months before this experiment was to take place, but allegedly they were repurposing technology that he designed for the Navy a few years earlier. Einstein's research apparently elevated the purpose of Tesla's devices before they were fitted to the hull of the USS Eldridge. There were at least two pods that were attached to the ship that looked somewhat like your classic Tesla coil. This operation was to be entirely top secret. The USS Eldridge hadn't even been officially commissioned yet. And even though there was a proper crew waiting to take over the vessel, the Navy had chosen for this experiment a hand-picked skeleton crew of newly graduated sailors to stand in. Everything was to be off the books. While in the Philadelphia Harbor in August of 1942, the orders were made to turn the devices on for the first time. This was not supposed to be a demonstration of the technology's full capabilities. Instead, they were just running a test to see if they could make the ship radar invisible. When the technology was activated, the ship was was enveloped by a glowing green fog, and in only a few seconds, the ship completely disappeared from sight. Not just radar invisible, not just invisible to the naked eye, the ship was completely gone. A couple hours later, off the coast of Virginia, a Navy sailor claimed to see the USS Eldridge appear a few miles off of his ship. It was observed for some time before it once again disappeared. The USS Eldridge rematerialized in the Philadelphia Harbor. Command tried to reach them on radio but got no reply. A party boarded the ship to find a scene straight out of a horror movie. Several of the crew members were wandering around aimlessly, unresponsive, devoid of their personalities. Other members of the crew were found fused to the hull, moaning in agony. The atoms of their bodies having passed partially through the bulkheads of the ship, permanently affixing them to the metal. The Navy, horrified by this scene, decided to cover up this event 
experiment, in hopes that nobody would ever find out the terrifying results of this experiment. Apparently, they had accidentally opened what physicists call an Einstein-Rosen bridge, a theoretical wormhole that allows solid objects to tunnel through space-time. For years, stories of the survivors would continue to circulate as the effects of the experiment had not yet permanently worn off, causing them to phase in and out of reality at random. One night, at a bar in New York, some sailors were enjoying some drinks, got into a bit of a scuffle causing a scene, and while everybody at the bar was looking at them, the bar staff and all the patrons saw them completely disappear. Hit the like button, that really helps me out a lot. And if you're new here and you're loving this video, don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell now so you never miss another episode. I upload new content every Thursday. And check out my Tell Me More playlists for hours of videos to keep you entertained and thinking. Morris K. Jessup is best known for being an author of UFO literature, but he was an astronomer and had a Master of Science degree. He was quite prolific in the field of UFO research, having written four books on UFOs between 1955 and 1956, and he was described as being, quote, probably the most original extraterrestrial hypothesizer of the 1950s. The 1950s were likely the worst time to be interested in the subject of UFOs, as the United States military was heavily cracking down on any discussion about the phenomenon. Partially out of paranoia about what that information would do to the public during a time of fear and tension with the Soviet Union, but also out of fear that their own secret technology might get exposed to the Soviets by their own citizens discussing what they see in the sky. In 1955, Jessup received two letters in the mail from a man calling himself Carlos Miguel Elende, claiming that during his time as a seaman in the United States Navy, witnessed a top secret World War II operation we now know as the Philadelphia Experiment. These letters are the original source for the most bold claims that we get about this experiment. Carlos Elende was the first person to claim that the ship disappeared from the Philadelphia Harbor, that it traveled through time, that it encountered aliens, and that the crew of the ship died by being fused to the hull. Jessup initially ignored these claims, believing Allende to be a crackpot. However, in 1957, Jessup was contacted by the Office of Naval Research, claiming that they received a copy of one of his books in the mail, but it had been heavily annotated. It appeared as if three separate individuals had been communicating with each other in these annotations in three shades of pen ink. One personality calling himself Jemmy, the other two would later be referred to as Mr. A and Mr. B. These notes discussed the merit of the ideas in Jessup's book and made reference to the Philadelphia experiment. Jessup was interviewed by the Navy about this package, asking him what he knew about all of this electromagnetic transportation stuff. It was at this point that Jessup told the Navy about the letters he had received two years earlier. Everybody concluded that the annotations in this book must have been written by this same Carlos Allende character. The Navy would hold on to the annotated version of the book, allegedly making a dozen copies to distribute among Navy intelligence. Morris Jessup would request a copy for himself, but would be denied. The annotated version of Jessup's book is now available for sale on Amazon, but tragically, Jessup would never get to see a copy. During this time, his life began to spiral. His wife left him, making him horribly depressed. And even though he had already had four books published, all of a sudden, nobody would publish his work anymore. His life was irreparably damaged. In 1959, Jessup contacted a man named Manson Valentine, claiming to have made a breakthrough in his research into the Philadelphia experiment. He arranged to meet Valentine the very next day. However, instead of driving to the meeting, Jessup would be found dead in his car of an apparent suicide, giving himself carbon monoxide poisoning by running a hose from his exhaust into his window, leaving people to question if that's what really happened. The Navy would eventually release the annotated version of his book. Sadly, 
years after his passing. He would never get to read it himself. He was never vindicated in his lifetime. It would later be discovered that this Carlos Miguel Allende character was really a man named Carl M. Allen. Carl's brother claims that he was technically a genius, but wasn't really that smart in his daily life. For example, he once took an IQ test and scored second highest in his county, but that same year, he failed grade nine. Carl apparently wasn't all that good at taking notes either, preferring instead to write all over everybody else's work, scratching out things that he didn't like and replacing them with his own thoughts on the subject. He had a habit of then mailing these annotated works to whoever he thought would be interested in reading his ideas, which is how Morris Jessup's book ended up in the possession of the Office of Naval Research. For some reason, Carl Allen's annotation really frightened the Navy. He went into great detail about his own idea of how UFOs worked, using an electromagnetic principle to create their own gravitational field and to propel themselves. Between describing the science behind electromagnetic propulsion and the Philadelphia experiment, Carl Allen must have hit a nerve with the Office of Naval Research, perhaps touching on the actual principle behind this top secret military technology. Carl Allen was, in fact, a former seaman in the United States Navy. And as far as I can tell, it's entirely possible he was involved in the Philadelphia experiment, or at least was a witness. I would even argue that his somewhat crazy way of thinking and writing might even be a side effect of being on the USS Eldridge. As the surviving crew of the operation was allegedly driven insane by the ship's electromagnetic field, it's widely believed among the UFO community that the Navy and Air Force have backwards engineered several UFOs that they've found over the years. For example, there were several technological advancements after the Roswell crash, like microchips, Teflon, Velcro, but Roswell wasn't the first crash. In 1897, Aurora, Texas, a UFO crashed on a farm, leaving its only occupant dead. The film Men in Black referenced this event in one of its opening scenes, when a saucer crashed into a windmill. In fact, UFO sightings were quite common in the late 1800s. Bob Lazar, the man who supposedly backwards engineered UFOs at Area 51, claims that one of the UFOs that he worked on was found in an archaeological dig, which is the one claim that Bob makes that I actually believe. Between that, Tesla's work on electromagnetic technology, and Einstein's unified field theory, the Navy may very well have been able to piece together a basic understanding of the principles employed by UFOs, allowing them to mock up a working model of the technology. A huge mistake, as they didn't have enough experience to wield such a powerful tool. Slapping a name like Albert Einstein on a project like this gives it a lot of legitimacy, making it seem like the smartest man on Earth was behind the wheel of this technology, but nothing could be further from the truth. Allegedly, Einstein did not endorse this experiment, claiming that humanity was not yet ready to wield such a power, and many claim that Tesla too was involved in the project's earliest stages, creating the electromagnetic generating modules that would eventually be rigged onto the ship. Apparently, Tesla too was appalled by the implications of this technology being used by the Navy, and allegedly sabotaged the equipment during its first demonstration to deter the Navy from using it in the future. Of course, this didn't work. The Navy's scientists would re-engineer Tesla's technology, and the principle on which this technology operates is actually quite simple. It's all about understanding Tesla's studies on the electromagnetic spectrum. The way it works is... To see the extended version of this video and to hear my thoughts on the subject, become a channel member or head on over to my Patreon. I find this all so compelling. The drama and intrigue of how Morris Jessup and Carl Allen got this story into our zeitgeist. The fear that the Navy seemed to display over the discussion of this technology. The rumors that Einstein and Tesla tried to stop the Navy from even conducting this experiment in the first place. I mean, this whole thing could have just flown under the radar, but the entire higher cover-up was foiled 
by a single sailor. It's kind of unreal how this whole thing started. A ufologist writes a book about things in the sky that disappear, and then he gets random letters in the mail one day saying, oh, you like things that disappear? How about this ship that disappeared? Which he initially writes off as the words of a crackpot, until one day the Navy shows up at his door asking him what he knows about all this. And then a few short years later, after he figures it out, he turns up dead. The scariest part, though, is just how far the Navy managed to take this field technology. Its current form is so powerful, it defies logic, becoming as a tool of the gods, bringing into question the morality of even wielding such a tool. In yet another crazy coincidence, only a week before I wrote this video, the United States Navy announced a series of new patents they've just authored, describing an entirely new form of technology, giving them the ability to literally manipulate space-time, augmenting matter, rewriting reality, as we know it. And that's exactly what we're going to be discussing next week. So join me next time when we talk about what really happened during the Philadelphia Experiment. Thank you for watching. Tell me what you guys think. I always spend the first couple days reading every single comment that I get on these videos. Be sure to subscribe to my vlog channel where I make follow-up videos responding to some of my favorite comments. And we've also launched a new podcast series where my co-writer and I discuss more of the kinds of things that we discuss in this series, The Strange and Unexplained. And of course, I'd like to thank my patrons and channel members for supporting my work. I couldn't do this without you. You're amazing.